cool. So ooh, let's talk about audio busing. So let me go into settings here. I'm going to make sure they're all enabled in audio outputs. Um, so again, this only needs to be enabled. Enabled means it's not actually sending somewhere. Um, um, and the other reason we don't want to do the Windows default playback device, um, and this is a thing that can mess up vMix, so it's something good to be on top of, especially if you're unplugging headphones often, um, like kind of how we are right now. Um, while I restart this, um, Windows will assign the speakers to whatever it thinks is the speaker. So if you remove your headphones, it's like, oh, you don't need this anymore, and it'll just immediately like reroute your audio to something else. So we don't want that to happen because we don't want to be on our Windows default audio for any streaming or like recording or output or of any kind because then it'll just get routed there and then that means um, we, did, we have no control over what it's doing because Windows is just deciding what output device it wants to use. So that's another reason we don't want to give it Windows default um, in any audio output so it doesn't like change the routing on us uh, without us knowing about it. So that's just a quick tidbit. So I went ahead over here and I added these eight audio buses. Um, so this is really, really great for vMix Call and how we have it set up on two of the three bots in each of the Remy's um, is we are basically equipped for three feeds on any P bots to be have remote. So that could mean three SRT inputs that we want to be able to record or bring into a switcher or three vMix calls. So, um, but, and how we've been doing SRT feeds so far has been to also give them a vMix call for the return. So half of it still applies for SRT situations, but for like a vMix call situation, because each person we're going to want to be able to have an individual talk channel to, um, but have them still hear each other. We do that mix minusing off of vMix on the console that's in that studio, uh, or in that control room, I should say. And then we route that to them, but we still want to control which audio mix minuses are going to the right person. So Chad and Al came up with this paradigm that's been working really well so far um, that I'll kind of try to replicate that while I can here while we're in the studio. Um, so if I go to vMix call here, we basically have a caller one, caller two, and caller three. Um, we assign caller one their microphone to bus A, but then their listen to bus E. And then caller two is their microphone to B and their listen to F. C for caller three and G for caller three. Um, D, you'll notice we didn't mention because we'll use this for playback. So we could, we would assign, you know, like let's say this Ready Take Live episode that's playing right now, I'll assign it to D. Um, how I do that to something I can't see here, I'll just right click on it, then click D. And then M, I'll take out a master so we're not streaming it, right? Because we want to go to an audio console, then come back in. Um, so I'll take it out of master so I'm not doubling that up. Um, and then that's playing over here, and then you'll see it's in D bus here. And so we will line up. If I go back over here to audio outputs, I'm not. I don't have Dante Virtual Sound Card card on here, so I can't really show how it's set up. But you'll notice if you look on any of those machines that you'll see you have Dante um, uh, Virtual Sound Card as an output and the channel that. Uh, has been pre-assigned to it. Um, so that way we'll be spitting out everything on its own channel up to eight um, and then sending that to the board and then back. Um, so how do we get it back in? Well, you just go to add input, audio input, and then you'll pick the Dante input from there. Um, which And then the numbers drop down will appear when you have Dante virtual sound card and you'll pick what channel you want. And then once, let's say this is the audio input that we wanted. I'll just go here to input 19 and then I'll assign that to E. So let's say like this is the mix minus for our first caller. I'll make sure that E is selected as their receive. I um, want to make sure that by right clicking on the caller that their audio source is E as well. Um, so that way they're hearing this. And then their send because they're caller one. Um, I can't do that in here actually, but I go over here and I make sure that their send is on A and that nothing else is. So then we have that isolated feed. Um, so that's an example for one caller. Their microphone, basically we hear them on bus A, which is output to the console. And then their mix and minus gets sent to them on an audio input that we route to bus E, which we make sure that they are listening to. Um, so then that way we have control over on the board, um, they, like the X32 and Remy 1 or the A&H and um, uh, Remy 2, and then that routes to COM, and then COM goes to them. So that way we have an interrupt channel on top of all their mix minus from the other talent and playback. Um, so it works out really, really well, and we could basically 
do we just really need to keep just adding new P bots every time we want to add three new callers? Um, so, and if you were paying attention um, to the first, when we talked about before, how we only have two video outputs on this, but we are saying we have three callers on a machine, so how are we getting that third person out? And we just do that over NDI. Uh, we pull out their NDI feed. We can take their audio input based on the, on the vMix call source over NDI. So we'll just spit that over NDI to uh, um, the switcher, um, since we're using vmix for most of the for most cases um, to bring them into the show when we have three on one machine um, so yeah so that's like a pretty much a basic thing for vmix call and now what's tricky about that is we just do that repetitively and with a lot of people sometimes we'll change the paradigm for like know it and studio rx we've done um, more simplified approaches where we basically had a talk channel to a, a host instead of like in every single person, because a lot of times, and even in studios, um, pre, like, like non-remote studios, a lot of times they'll have an IFB on the host, but not the guest. And if we want to talk to the guest, we'll either use an SA or we'll just have the host talk to them. So we kind of replicated that in another form, uh, which is basically we make bus E for a host. And so we say, like, let's say this caller is the host here. I'm just going to label that really quick. Like, let's say this caller is the host and bus E was our talk channel. And let's say this Dante that we made before is com. Um, so we'll just put com on bus E, that to the host. And then if we have another vMix caller, let's say this is our guest. We wouldn't make an individual talk channel to them. Instead, we would add an audio input. Let me see if I could add the Dante again. Probably not. Oh yeah, um, so let's say this is our all channel. Um, we'll just put this in the guests bus. So the guest, let's say that we want their source to be F, or let's say, let's make it G because it's all the way at the end. Um, so now if we have all these different guests, instead of making all of their own buses, because we had like, let's say three guests, so four people on one box, um, I would just make their audio source G as well. Um, because we don't need to talk to any of them individually, we could talk to them as a group. So now G is their group, we just want to route COM to it. So we're going to route our second COM channel here to bus G, um, but because it's an all, we also want to talk to the host. So the host was uh, on E, so we can take one audio source and send it to multiple buses at the same time. So I'm just going to go here, pretending this is our uh, all channel, and I'm going to be in both E and G. So now I'm talking to the host caller and all three guest callers that we made here. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's pretty much like the workflow we've been doing for shows that we have more than two, well, more than three people on, um, and we still want to have vMix call on one machine. Um, because what's great about vMix call that saves us a, a bit of trouble is that vMix will do an automatic mix minus. So what that means is that it will automatically not send audio to itself. So if let's say the host is listening to bus E, if I had this in bus E, I don't, in other like consoles and worlds, I would need to be worried because I'm sending the host's audio back to themselves so it'll create a loop, right? Or they'll hear themselves on a slight delay. But vMix takes care of that already. It won't let us accidentally do that. So it's really good when we need to be fast because we're not worried about accidentally creating something that'll be like a really bad experience for someone. It'll automatically mix themselves out of their return audio. Um, so that works great. For Studio RX, it worked really well too because vMix is a lot lower latency than the latency that SRT needed to be to be at high quality. So we were able to make SRT a little bit latent, get higher quality out of that, but their talks and listens were on a vMix call. So they were able to talk uh, to each other much faster um, than they would have if it was on SRT. Um, but the audience at home doesn't know the wiser, but they just have a better viewing experience because they get higher quality. So um, that was a fun trick we had. And for that, we also had, we had one channel to a host and then we had an all channel to all the guests. Um, so that, that was a pretty nice setup for that. I think it worked pretty well. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much audio busing. There is a software that I want to play with uh, that I haven't had a chance to yet that makes this into a matrix because this is really confusing mainly because you just can't see everything at one time, right? It's all like buried into like secondary menus. Um, but it's, uh, there's a software that makes it into a matrix and you could see what inputs are turned on versus turned off and then where they're routed to all in one grid. Um, so you could like 
set things up and make things look correct um, and see what's going on from a more bird's eye view a lot faster. But so I haven't had a chance to play around with that, but I definitely want to get that worked into our flows. Uh, I saw it like on someone posted in one of the Facebook or on the VMix groups and um, on one of the VMix Facebook groups, and it, it's like on GitHub somewhere, so should be easy to get and play around with. Cool, that's audio busing. Uh, one more feature here that's pretty cool is uh, you can solo input. So that means um, you could listen to it without changing what's going on in program. So that's a good way to get a PFL, which is kind of like a pre-fade listener. Listen, let's say you will have a producer talk microphone that you have routed to a vMix caller so you could talk to them. Um, but I want to hear what they're saying, but I'm doing a show right now. I don't want to hear what they're saying in program just myself. So solo, if I have this activated, I could listen to just that one thing instead of program but uh, that isn't going to program. So I could ha listen to that to make sure it's good before we go to air. I could be like, hey, give me a check that you're like, oh, one, two, three, hear them on that without it going to program, confirm they're good, and then bring them on. Um, but the only way to hear what's going on there um, is by using the headphones bus. Um, so anything that's soloed goes to headphones. Um, so if I go to audio outputs here, so right now I have a default Windows playback. Normally I make it speakers, real tech audio, because that is the motherboard um, headphone output. Um, so I'll just select this, and then now anything I solo, I'll be able to hear. Um, and I also have some selection in uh, regards to, as we saw earlier when we were bringing some inputs in, we could say mute in headphones, so then that way um, if there's some tracks or something that are going to be really loud or something, you just don't need it, um, you can leave that off of your headphones, so you can leave your headphone dedicated to um, hearing other, like, talk back and people. Um, but you just got to be aware that you have something soloed because you might be like, why don't I hear anything? Or like, you might, or worst case scenario, you're hearing them talking, but they're actually not on in program. Um, so you... Um, are like you're listening to them but the world the audience isn't listening to them when they should be so that's just a danger of soloing so that's why um, it doesn't let you do more than one I think is to just like simplify it a little bit so you don't get yourself into that weird situation um, you'll also see over here these arrows these just signify uh, AFV the audio follows video um, and then this speaker button here is just on and off so sometimes what I'll do um, is leave it on and AFV off. Like if it's a playback or something, that's just gonna take itself out as soon as it's done playing. Um, I'll just leave it on sometimes, so that way it'll the audio will still be playing over the fade. Because sometimes you want to like hear the last couple seconds of a clip while you're seeing the picture for the next thing. So I'll leave it this way, so then it'll play out for the remainder of it, the clip until. Um, uh, and but we could be on another image and program um, instead of the video being locked to the audio. Um,